Fred Rogers and his work on children's television with his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, has been respected and praised for over 50 years now. The man's kindness and soft demeanor is the stuff of legend, making him a mythic figure in the vein of Bob Ross. He is a man that can do no wrong, a person many cited as influential or helpful in their everyday lives. In Won't You Be My Neighbor, director Morgan Neville aims to not only chart Rogers' career, but also try to understand the man. He accomplishes these goals while also promoting and inhabiting Roger's philosophies, ultimately making a purely empathetic film. Neville interviews many people in Roger's life, his family, his friends, his co-workers, etc. They tell stories about their time with him and give their own interpretations on Roger's. Since Roger's is dead, it's impossible to get his perspective on current events or ask him new questions. To combat this, the film uses old interviews and clips of Mr. Roger's almost as ways to expand on the ideas and concepts set forth by those being interviewed. We see what he valued in television, in child development, and how he generally saw the world and the best way to interact with it. The film aims to inhabit Roger's philosophies on media and child care. It values silence and patience in order to let things sink in. It's a, it's a perfect interviewing trick. <laughs> Very funny. It uses animation to discuss the more difficult parts of Roger's life, similar to how he used puppets to discuss darker topics. And the film mostly focuses on the helpers. Mr. Rogers has a famous quote that reads, When I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. In the documentary, whenever they show a traumatic event like the Kennedy assassination or 9-11, they show very little footage of the actual disaster. Instead, they focus on the people, the ones directly affected by these tragedies. Some of them are bystanders, but some of them are unquestionably helpers. In these sequences, the film tries to put the viewer in the shoes of those experiencing these real tragedies. It tries to create empathy. Rogers used empathy as the basis for his method of teaching children. He believed that understanding the child and going further to think and act like a child will make it easier to properly teach and love a child. This is why Rogers could cover serious topics that even adults have difficulty discussing among themselves. He discussed death, war, divorce, racial inequality, you name it. He always believed that a child could handle these topics, but only if they were presented in the right way with plenty of room for discussion. He valued talking, and most importantly, listening to children. When children simply absorb media, be it news on violent acts or toy commercials glorifying that same violence, it's important to understand how this psychologically affects children. When watching TV from the 60s to the early 2000s, you could always find someone that was thinking about the child in these strange and dire times. You could always find a helper in the overcrowded children's television space. That helper was Mr. Rogers. Yet Rogers didn't just help children who watch TV, but he also helped the adults around him. Many people have stories about how Rogers affected them or helped them. One of the more complex stories comes from Francois Scarborough Clemens, the actor who played Officer Clemens on the show. Not only was he a black man on television in the 60s, but he was also a closeted homosexual. Rogers made a grand gesture to defend Clemens' skin color, famously by sharing a pool with him on the show. But Rogers would not allow Clemens to come out, as it would kill the funding for the show. Despite doing the wrong thing at the time, Clemens ultimately considers Rogers to be a father figure, someone who supported him and cared for him. While of course people are complex and can change their opinions over time, I was struck by how despite Rogers hurting him by denying him a part of his identity, Clemens still respected and valued him. I think this plays into Rogers' dedication to practicing empathy in every part of his life. Even though he may have hurt Clemens at the time, he still didn't treat him differently. He still valued him in all other aspects of his life. He respected his music career and supported him being on the television show and any of his other endeavors. As this part of the film shows, Mr. Rogers wasn't perfect, but he always tried to make up for it, continuing to love and care for those he may have hurt. The helpers in Rogers' life were his friends, his family, his crew, etc. The helpers in their lives included Mr. Rogers. Children aren't the only ones that need help, need someone to talk to, or need support. Humans need helpers all their lives. We need empathy from birth until death, during school and out in the job market, when we sit at home or in the very face of evil. As this documentary shows, we should not only look for the helpers, but we should be the helpers. Mr. Rogers has become a godlike figure, a perfect being who symbolized all that is good in the world. 
but he wasn't perfect. He was unquestionably human. He had serious self-doubt. He made bad calls sometimes, but he never stopped caring. He did small things that became grand gestures over time. Mr. Rogers did things anyone can do. The only difference was that he was on TV. And just like everyone else, Rogers needed helpers too, to reaffirm the positive effects he had on society and to encourage him to keep going. By making the film reflect Rogers' show and philosophies, Neville helped to not only demystify the man, but also dispel the impossibility of his beliefs. The film shows that spreading kindness and empathy is easily achievable for anyone in their everyday life. Won't You Be My Neighbor ends with the interviewer asking various interviewees to think about someone that has helped them in their lives. The film lingers on their faces, not only letting them think, but giving the viewer a chance to as well. Afterwards, they ask who they thought about. This moment always brings me to tears because I know I would not be where I am or who I am without the many family and friends who believed in me. I want to be a helper, and I want the world to help each other out. Hopefully many years from now, we'll all have someone who will look back and think about the positive impact we've had in their lives. We can't all be Mr. Rogers, but we can all be someone's Mr. Rogers. Thank you. My mother. How I got to this point, because it was my grandfather's doing. There was this woman named Viva, who used to take care of me when I was little. She was our babysitter. I thought about Fred. How about you? <laughs>